Yo, <laughs> this is Neville Gallimore from the Dallas Cowboys, and I want to give a major shout out to Mike Tag. Keep bringing the hype to the Cowboys Nation. We love and appreciate it. Now, can you dig it? Let's get it. What's up, Cowboys Nation? Your boy Mike Tag here. Kelly K9, we are back. How you doing today, Kelly? I'm doing just fine. Ready to talk some more Cowboys football as we always do on this show. So can't be a bad day when you're talking Cowboys football. Oh, no. And this is even a better day because we've got a very special guest. And I, I mean, I got goosebumps and chills thinking about it. I mean, you know, I, I got to say, I wasn't, I wasn't born, so I didn't get a ch chance to see him play. But... I'm a Cowboys historian, seen a lot of videos, read a lot of books, and and you're talking about Chuck Howley, you know, one of the greatest linebackers in Cowboys history, really one of the greatest Cowboys in uh, in Cowboys history, six-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Pro, Super Bowl champion. He was the Super Bowl MVP on the losing team. You know, when we played the Colts, we lost the game, but he dominated so much that they said, you know what, you guys didn't win, but the best player in the field was Chuck Howley, so we're going to go ahead and give him the honor. And uh, the funny story, which we'll, we're going to talk about, is I don't think he was going to take it, but they were giving away, you know, the, I guess the winner gets a station wagon. So uh, you're not going <laughs> to turn down a vehicle. You know how that goes. So it, it's – and he's doomsday defense. I mean, all of this. But really, you know, getting – finally getting enshrined into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, long overdue. I think it's been 40 years since he was in the Cowboys' ring of honor when he was inducted into the Cowboys' ring of honor. So – it's really, you know, I don't want to say criminal. I think it's, you know, I don't want to say disgraceful, but it was really disappointing. And I don't, and we're going to get into it. I don't know if there was a Cowboys bias for many years, but he's finally yeah. in. Uh, I think you guys know, you know, Mr. Howley has some health issues, um, you know, battling different things. So he's not able to, you know, to kind of share the stories that we'd all love to hear. But we got really one, you know, we got, we got the next, next best thing. We got his son, Scott Howley, entering the cave. So we're going to talk some great football and talk about his father's career. How are you doing today, Mr. Alley? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. good well, we appreciate you coming into the cave, and it's it's got to be an exciting moment, you know, for your family when you, you, you finally, you know, you finally get that call that your father is being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I mean, what was what was your, your you know, your reaction, your family's reaction? Oh, we were ecstatic. We were, we were absolutely thrilled by the, by the whole event. Um, uh, the, the president of the hall of fame called me. I was actually driving at the time. And, and, uh, so, um, I was sitting in traffic and, and he called and said, Hey, I just want to let you know that your, your dad made it into the hall of fame. And then of course he swore me to secrecy until they could actually come out with it. Probably. <laughs> but, but yeah, we were, we were absolutely thrilled. I think, um, I think in, in some way, dad uh, was really happy about it. Uh, overall, the family was excited and proud. And um, yeah, we're, we're just looking forward to, uh, to continuing to represent. Yeah. And, and, and looking at, you know, the, the, the famous knock on the door. And I mean, and again, I, you know, I, I love the Cowboys, love the history. So I, I get chills just thinking about it. You had Bob Lilly. Real Roger Stahl back, I believe Mel Renfro, no, Renfro you know, was yeah. there. And I mean, what a what a great moment. And and seeing your father, and I know, you know, he's battling uh, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia. So it, you know, I don't know, you know, you don't know if he, he knows it, but he just I don't know, the look in his eyes seemed like when he was there that that he that he he understood the you know what was going on. At least I always want to believe that. Yeah, he he kind of got it when um John McClain, the uh, the uh, sports writer at Houston Chronicle, um, he was the was the uh, Hall of Fame uh, representative that that argued for Dad to to be included into this year's class, and he came to the house and he visited with Dad a little bit, and uh, um, Dad was a little bit 
not really grasping what was being said. He didn't understand the gravity of it. But afterwards, um, uh, his his uh, caregiver called me and said that, you know, he was talking to dad. And dad looked up at him. He says, well, I guess I'm going to need to buy a new suit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's and, good uh, stuff. Did he, so did he, you know, obviously it's, it's long overdue for him getting into the hall of fame. We, we can all agree on that. Um, you know, before he started having um, some of the, you know, problems with uh, the dementia and Alzheimer's, did he express his desires about wanting to be in the hall of fame? Um, you know, a lot of these, just recently, you know, Drew Pearson, he was more vocal about it, wanting to wanting to be in the Hall of Fame. Was this something that he really wanted um, throughout his, you know, after his career was over? Oh, absolutely. But my dad is, is a very um, quiet man. Um, he does, he speaks more through his actions than he does his words. So I, I think um, even though he didn't vocalize it, he was always hopeful that, that one day the Hall would be calling him. And unfortunately, the day that they did call him, um, he was he was really unable to to uh, participate in in the whole event. Yeah. But uh, overall, he never lost any hope or, or desire to be remembered in that way. I think it's a it's a great testament to his to his abilities and to, to the person himself. But uh, um, I think we're very glad that he got in. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, it's just so long overdue. And I, I remember every year it was, you know, you, you go through it and you go through it and his name was always popping up. And, you know, what really kind of upset me is they did the hundredth, you know, when they did the hundredth and they were trying to say, all right, we're going to get all the guys in that, 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 that needed to, you know, needed to get in. And, you know, you thought for sure he would get in. You thought, you know, Piercy, you, you thought <clears> some <throat> of these guys that, that were well-deserved. And I don't know if it's a, uh, they're always used to say it was a Cowboys bias. I don't know. Did you ever hear stories of that? And any of the, did he ever yeah, say that? I, I, yeah, I did. Like I kind of feel like maybe that was part of it. I think the 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 uh, um, title America's team. I think really uh, divided uh, some some of the uh, electorate in in the regard that you know they they didn't like it. And so there might have been a, a bias based on on the fact that they were, you know, being labeled as America's team. Yeah. And I think you wrote a letter. Didn't you write a letter to the Hall I of did. Fame? I did. I wrote a letter to the to the then president of the Hall of Fame. And and he wrote me back. And he did tell me that, you know, um, he he said that dad's name was always, always on the, he received enough votes every year to always be on the ballot. So um, you know, for the last 40, 45 years, he's, he's been on that ballot. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll just, uh, yeah, finally, you know, obviously well-deserved and so happy. So uh, talking about his career, you know, one of the interesting things, and, and I'll be honest with you, the, the cowboy fan I am, I didn't know until I researched, he was drafted by the Chicago bears. That's true. And uh, he was first round pick and he had a knee injury mm -hmm. and he was, I guess at a, uh, gas station was he did he own it or was he working there he, he the owned it yeah that? he owned it he thought that was going to be his his life as as, a, as an owner of a gas station and um um gil brandt found him and, and tech shram came calling and, and said hey we're, we've got this expansion team do you think you might want to give us a try and, and he said he agreed he said yeah sure i'll i'll, I'll come back out <laughs> the rest is his. Worked, out, worked out pretty well for him. 13, 13 years of the Cowboys and a Hall of Fame career, so you can't you can't beat that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with with all that time that went by, and after he retired, were were you guys a a family that were still Cowboys fans? Did he remain a Cowboys fan after he retired and keep up with the team? And and do you you know do you still follow the team today at all? Oh yeah, we 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 still follow the team. We're very very much fans. Um, dad has maintained, uh, solid friendships with a lot of the players. Um, you know, they, they, uh, they would get together. We would, we used to, he's got a ranch in East Texas and, uh, we used to have big 4th of July parties out there and all of the, uh, all of the, uh, former teammates would all come out there and, and we'd spend the, uh, spend the day out there, uh, with their kids and their grandkids and, and just kind of enjoy the day. Wow. 
No, that that's awesome. And and I know we had Charlie Waters, we had uh, Larry Colson's old teammates on, mm-hmm. and and Craig Morton. And, and Charlie Waters, I, I understand, he called him a quiet assassin. You said, you know, your dad didn't talk a lot, but, you know, his actions, you know, spoke well on the field. And I think the other nickname I saw was Big Big Play Chuck. So, you know, and, and he had big plays. I mean, you look at the Super Bowl, uh, four interceptions uh, he had in, in, in the playoffs in his career. Obviously, two in the Super Bowl. I think he had another one in the one that they, they finally won against, you know, and they finally got over the hump. Um during that time, did he ever share? Because I know Bob Lilly would always, you know, he had that frustration after the after the Super Bowl loss of the, the Colts where he some throw his helmet, you know, 100 yards down the field. And they're always coined next year's champions, and they never could just get over the hump. And it's very similar to the Cowboys today in a way is this Cowboys organization and team for some reason just can't get, get over the hump. But did he ever reflect on some of the frustrations and maybe how great it was to finally, you know, get that Super Bowl trophy? Well, he uh, he was like I said, he's like everybody tells you, he's a quiet man, and and he uh, he taught me a lot about you know uh, how how to accept loss and failures. Um, he he never he never dwelled on on losses. He never. Uh, expressed frustration uh, about him. Um, he, he looked at it as, you know, this is my job. I'm, I'm employed by this company and, and I'm, uh, I just need to work and get better. And he, he always maintained a, a, a forward looking attitude uh, regarding all of that. Yeah, that's well. And he, you know, one of the accomplishments he had that uh, you, you'll, I'm pretty sure this is something that nobody will ever see in their lifetime was that he won the most valuable player on the losing team in a Super Bowl. Did he ever talk about that moment and uh, and kind of what that meant? Because it's it's just never it's something you never have, have seen. You never probably will see that again. Yeah. Um, they right. just don't do it. But did he ever talk about that moment and kind of what that meant? You know. Oh, terms- sure. I mean, he, he thought they were kidding. He thought it was some sort of a practical joke at first. And, and uh, you know, when, when he, I guess, realized that it wasn't a practical joke, I think, you know, it was very bittersweet for him. I mean, it was he, he didn't feel like he deserved it. And, and he certainly, you know, didn't didn't really he was he was very conscious of his teammates. And, you know, of course, you know, he really didn't feel like he could celebrate it that well because of the fact that, you know, he was on the he was in a situation where they didn't win the game. Um, but, uh, you mentioned the station wagon. I mean, it really wasn't, <laughs> it really wasn't how that played out. Um, I was, I was, uh, 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 way away from getting my driver's license at the moment, but dad pulled up in front of the house with a, uh, with a gorgeous, and I mean, gorgeous cowboy blue Dodge charger. Oh, wow. And, and I, I was just beside myself. I just couldn't believe that this was the car that the Super Bowl had. That's had, what they gave were the station wagon. That's, they that's gave, much better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> better. They gave him a gorgeous, it was, it was all the options, all the bells and whistles. It was a gorgeous cowboy blue, cowboy metallic blue Dodge Charger. Greatest wow. car I've ever seen. And I begged him on bended knee. I begged him not to get rid of that car. I said, just put it up on blocks. Just save it. Let me. Let me have it when when I'm old enough to drive a car. The next day, I look outside and there is a station wagon in our driveway. Oh no! <laughs> I was crushed. <laughs> it was and it wasn't even a good looking station wagon by most. Days. I mean, I guess it was in that era, but I mean, it had the wood paneling. <laughs> and, you know, and it was just like I was just devastated that that he had traded that. Dodge Charger for a station wagon, but dad, you know, dad was a consummate family man. I mean, it's like, well, you know, this isn't practical. We can't have a, we can't have a Dodge Charger. It won't fit all, you know, won't fit the family and everything else. Cause we used to drive to uh, see family in West Virginia every summer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I understand his, his thinking on this. It's like, well, if we're going to drive to West Virginia, we're not going to do it in a Dodge Charger. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, um, needless to say, I was not happy about that decision. Oh, that just <laughs> says a lot about him, though, because I mean that's 
definitely the family man uh, to get to give that up. But break your break your son's heart. I mean, God, what I would have loved to have. I had a five hundred dollar uh, Oldsmar or uh, uh, Oldsmobile sure. Cutlass or whatever it was, <laughs> and I, I would have loved to have a brand new car like that. So that's funny, and that even makes the story even sweeter because I yeah. was thinking. Geez, was it that bad in the sixties that they're giving away a station wagon to the Super Olympic? Oh, no, I mean, no, now they're no, giving away no. Ferraris they, and Corvettes. They gave him a gorgeous car. <laughs> wow! 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 That 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 is a that is amazing. That is amazing. So, you know, and, and talking about you know maybe some moments with your dad. Is there any kind of like a special you know story you know just about him as a man? It doesn't even need to be professional. It's just something that just get lets the Cowboys fans and just lets everyone understand the type of person your dad was and is. Um, he was a very strong Christian. I mean, he, he, I mean, not going to church, that was not an option. I mean, we were all ready and we all got in the car and we all went to, we all went to church every Sunday. And, and that was, that was one of the, the laws in the house. You just, unless you were on, you know, deathly ill and couldn't make it out of bed, you were, you were going to church and, um, and that kind of an upbringing, um, really had an impact on me. It really, it really taught me, you know, the values and, and my own children, you know, that, 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 you know, this was, this was what we did. And this was part of our, our, you know, part of our routine, our life. And he kept everything uh, structured and, and very organized. It was great. It was great. To, you know, he, he taught me a, a great deal about being a good father. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know, as a father myself and, you know, I, having a father, there's no, no better impact that, that, that you can have on your kids or, you know, obviously a parent can have on their kids and a father is, is that relationship and building them up. So, I yeah. mean, it's awesome. It's, it's yeah, awesome. I really seen that way. I yeah. didn't really understand that he was famous. I just knew him as my dad. <laughs> so I, I really couldn't understand why the priest would always stop at his pew on the way out of the church and say, hey, Chuck, see me when you get outside. I just really never quite understood that. Now, was he ever upset? Did he say, hey, your dad's got to step it up here. These cowboys are hurting me. Did they ever do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, but no, that that yeah, I mean that that's awesome. It's it is just such such good stories and and it was a different era. Like I was talking mm -hmm. um to Larry Cole and he had a, a job. I mean, it was, you know, the Cowboys, it wasn't a full-time job, but you know, they did it, but he got yeah. into, I guess, real estate later on. And he said he was even contemplating like some years. He's like, well, should I, you know, maybe I'm doing better in real estate. Maybe I shouldn't play football. It's just, it's just different. It was just a different sure. era. Well, yeah, dad had a job. He worked for the Hager Corporation. Oh. Hager, is that the oil? Hager Apparel. Oh, Apparel. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Hager Slacks. Yeah, yeah. I, I had my fair share of leisure shoots from. from <laughs> did, um, did he do that during the off season or was that after his career? No, in the off season. In the off season? Wow. Yeah, he had his own business after the, after his career. That's, that's amazing. That's I mean, now there is so much of your time and so much of everything that they do. It, it, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. I think Roger Stallback, I don't know if I read where he, you know, he learned a lot from your dad on business. Um, and, if he did, he did a great job because Roger yeah, Stallback yeah. Pretty, pretty successful. Roger did, Roger did very well. I mean, he was he was a he's a great real estate guy. Yeah. Do um and Kelly, I, I, I hog all the time. Go ahead and jump in. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say it, during his career, did he did he uh, do you still have any 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 mementos or or, or any kind of you know, memorabilia that, that was through the years, the Super Bowl ring, all that kind of stuff. Sure, sure. Yeah, we, uh, we've we sent a lot of that up to the Hall of Fame for them to have. And then um, so they they have most of it. I mean, uh, throughout the house that we when we that I grew up in, he had his his Pro Bowl trophies on the wall, uh, their, their gold helmets. Um, he also had. Uh, you know, in, in the house that they were living in at the time, they had his Ring of Honor trophy, his MVP trophy, uh, several game balls. Um, and then he had this this giant book. It pressed away over 200 pounds because I tried lifting it. And it was really hard. 
that the uh, that they gave him uh, for the 50th anniversary of the Super Bowl. So it was it was just an enormous book. So he had that on display in his uh, in his study. Wow! 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 That's, mm -hmm. that's like a you look behind me and I say like, you get a, you know you get these shrines and as I tell my kids it's like I don't know what is going to happen like you know what am I going to do with all this stuff it's just <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just memories you collect and um, and he's very well represented in the cave which I'll show you in a little bit yeah yeah it was a happy coincidence that the hall called and and so we we were kind of debating on you know okay. I have, a, I have a younger sister and it's kind of like, well, OK, what are we going to do with all this stuff? And it's like, well, we finally just decided, OK, um, we're going to send it to the Hall of Fame. Wow. And, and I think that that really summed it up because when we were there for the planning meeting in March, they, they, they made a good point. They said, you know, you can keep the memorabilia at your house and it can be seen by, you know, a few people. Or you can send it to us, and it can be seen by millions. Yeah. So now, do you family, own it? Is it on a like a a consignment or something? Or do you donate? No, we permanently it? donated it to the to the Hall of Fame. Um, oh, nice. and, and I think you can go to their to the uh, Hall of Fame uh, uh, website. They've got a, a, a translucent locker set up that has some of the memorabilia that we sent up there on display now. Wow. And you can see that on their on their website. But I think, you know, there's quite a bit more that we sent. We sent his old cleats. We sent his jerseys. We sent his helmet, um, his MVP trophies up there, um, um, his ring of honor trophies in there. So it's quite a bit of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there um, any celebration that the Cowboys plan for this year? Um, I'm I'm told that they they're planning one for one of the home games. Hopefully, it's one I'm at. I hope yeah, so. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, apparently there's a, there's a ring presentation that happens. Yeah. At one yeah. of the games. Okay. Yeah, I know. So I know that they have you know each each Hall of Famer that gets you know inducted in the Hall of Fame. They they have somebody to to introduce them basically um, now. Was that decision something that was how how was that made? Is it, who's uh, who's going to be uh, making that? Is it going to be the, the well the, the the presenter? I'll give a, a three minute speech and okay. the presenter will be Bob Lilly. Okay, all right. And so uh, we just my my sister and I kind of talked about it, and it was somebody that Dad you know has great admiration for, and 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 Bob was kind of there throughout the entire career. My dad was there, so. Um, we felt it appropriate that that Bob would be his presenter. Oh, that's special. I mean, that's, that's going to be good. And I thought I read where they were saying that maybe they had to vote to where if you're going to have that opportunity to 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 speak or was that did I misread that or was that always? Uh, no, that's that's the uh, that's the um, that's the new president. Um, he's a great guy. Um, he's made several changes that were that he felt needed to be made they 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 had it in the past where uh some of the speeches were pre-recorded just for for uh time's sake mm -hmm. um and, and it kind of uh, had you know they kind of evolved back to the old way of of allowing you know individual speakers to be able to come out and do that so so he's really done a lot to to you know bring more of a personal touch back to the, to the old, whole experience. Yeah, no, that's much better. I wasn't a big fan of the, the I think the last year, I think last year is it, the way they, they did it. Hopefully it'll be back to the old way. I like it a lot, but I don't need the 30 minute speeches and right. somebody's, you know, some guys go on and go all day, but yeah, was, they, they uh, did kind of tell us, look, we're not going to send the hook out if you get off the rails, <laughs> but you know, you need to keep it brief. <laughs> but, you know, I think about it and it's a moment you know, and obviously it's different. It's different for you guys because you know, you know, your dad's not not able to, to really share his story. But it's a family. To me, it's a it's a family honor, right? Yeah. So you know, all of you guys, you know, you 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 know, his wife supported him. You the kids support him all through the thing. And this is just a kind of an accomplishment of of the family. 
And right. I, you know, I, I, when I read that, I was like, "You got to be kidding me! They're not going to give them the opportunity to, to share the story and share the story of their father and share the story, mm-hmm. you know, of, of, of you know Chuck Alley, you know, the great linebacker for the mm-hmm. Cowboys." So I'm glad that they they are doing that. So right, it's right. It's 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 going to be a great opportunity. I, I think um, the Hall of Fame has done an excellent job in in making sure that that it's not just the inductee, but it's also their family and. And the one thing that really resonated with us is the fact that they have told us, you know, you're, you're, you're always welcome here. You're part, you're now part of the hall of fame family. We want you to come back. We want your grandchildren to come back because we want you to continue to tell the story about your father, your, your grandfather, uh, your great grandfather, as it goes through, they they want those people coming back and and sharing their stories of of their individual lives with with dad. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'll be a it'll be a special moment indeed. And like we all said, it's 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 long overdue. So I'm just I know as a Cowboys fan, even though I'm a, a younger generation Cowboys fan, still appreciate the history and understand and know what a great player he was cornerstone to one of the greatest defenses to ever, um, you know, play for a a very history rich Dallas Cowboys franchise. So it's just, uh, it's going to be a special moment. And I'm just, I'm overjoyed for you guys and and for your father that you guys all get to share that moment. And, uh, you know, in a very special place in the pro football hall of fame out there in Canton. So looking, looking forward to it for sure. I've never been as big of a fan. And I'm, you know, I was a, a, you know, in the eighties and nineties more, you know, that's when I started the Cowboys in the, in the eighties, but they weren't very good. And then obviously the nineties were so good. Now it's like, geez, can it never happen again? I was spoiled. And when I was uh, in high school, but um, I've never been to the hall of fame and wanted to go obviously with Irvin and Aikman and Emmett. And I just never did. It's on my bucket list. And I was like, man, I got to do it. So have you been before? Have, was your father been, been to the hall of fame to see his teammates, uh, you know, when they were in track? Dad hasn't been there. I've, I, my sister and I went up in March for a planning meeting and they gave us a, 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 a private tour uh, at that time. And it's truly awe inspiring. I mean, we were privileged enough to be able to go down into the vault and actually mm-hmm. see uh, some of the artifacts that that are, are are rotated out into the displays from time to time. But we got to see um, helmets from the 1920s. Uh, they they have just about every type of artifact you can think of, and and they have uh, clippings and publications about Dad. Um, uh, there that that we got to look through and, and so it's truly it was truly uh, uh, unique and inspirational. I mean, the the museum itself you can you can spend you can literally spend a whole day there. Um, wow. It's 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 got that much to see and, and do. It's really uh, it's really an awe inspiring uh, place. It really yeah. is. Yeah, and, and just one last thought, but I want to share this, and I want to ask. I, I want to I want to ask just a couple other questions, but so just so you know, this is the hall. Of, this is the Cowboys Hall of Fame shrine behind me. This is what I got, but you you I just want to show your father is very well represented. So I took some pictures, and hopefully you'll be able to you'll you'll be oh, able nice. to see him. Yeah. So there we go. So that's my Super Bowl MVP with you know with your father, Stallback, sure, sure. you know, Randy White, all that good stuff. Right. This is the middle one is the ring of honor when there was only four you yeah. know and it's it's your father bob Lilly, you know i think it's leroy jordan and don perkins and it's signed by it's signed by all of them mm-hmm. and then this was just more of a, a a picture of your father the same cutout but we did one and and got it signed but this is my pride possession this is the cowboys <laughs> defensive greats and i've got it signed by everybody i'm missing two people and I, hopefully I'll get them, I'll get it finished. But y- y- your father's on there, of course, with, you know, Bob Lilly, Randy White, Leroy yeah. Jordan, Mel Renfro, and, you know, Cliff Harris and Darren Woodson and Haley. But I'm missing DeMarcus Ware and Everson Wall. So that's my, as soon as I get that finished up, that's going to be my, my, my prize possession. Because I just, all those Dallas Cowboy greats, it's, it, it, it's so cool. And your, I think your father was really big into the fans. Uh, mm-hmm. signed a lot of autographs and I know we got a bunch of fan mail, obviously, you know, probably throughout his career, I can imagine. Right. Um, 
what kind of amazing things? Any memory of any amazing uh, thing that someone sent? We get we get all kinds of crazy stuff in the mail. I mean, we we've, we've gotten uh, programs from Super Bowls. We've gotten tickets from Super Bowls. Um, people will come by and bring their jerseys. You know, back in back in the day when Dad actually played a lot of the Cowboys lived in the same neighborhood. So, I mean, we were two doors down from Dan Reeves and three doors back from, from uh, uh, Dave Manders. Uh, Tony Alessio was on a street across, you know, adjacent to us. So uh, a lot of times people would, would just basically do this, this sort of autograph crawl. They would just come to each of the individual houses and get autographs. Dad was more than happy to accommodate them. Uh, and even when we went to restaurants, you know, uh, we'd go out to the parking lot and then dad would come out about 20 or 30 minutes later because he wanted to make sure that everybody got, got you know, got the autographs they were asking for. Wow. That's yeah, pretty that's cool. awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's definitely different. It must have been a pretty good uh, neighborhood uh, football game you guys had on, a- <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Well, we played a lot of tag. We didn't do a lot of football playing out there, you know. <laughs> Tackle on the grass, tag in the street like we used to do. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so since you're a Cowboys fan, we're Cowboy fans. So I just got I, – I would be – I would, would be remiss if I didn't, didn't at least ask your opinion. So the Cowboys, you have the Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson is, you know, obviously got the team to the Super Bowls and this and that. And there's there's a there's what's been thought of the Jimmy Johnson curse. And for some reason, Jimmy Johnson has not been able to get into the Cowboys ring of honor. And um, so a lot of people think there's a curse to that. Do you, do you buy into any of this kind of stuff? And should Jimmy Johnson be in the ring of honor, in your opinion, as a fan? I, I I don't buy into into any of that. I think it's 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 the individuals, the personal performance. My dad always used to tell me that you know that his that he being a starter that was his job, and that he had to earn it every single day of his of his career. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of believe in that sort of thing. I think it's each up to each individual player to bring their best. Mm-hmm. Um, whether Johnson should be in the Ring of Honor is is, I think based on his on his you know history his track record. I mean, I think so, but that's my personal opinion. I mean, I was I was the Landry era kid, so yeah. um, it's yeah. kind of hard for me to to relate a lot of times to the new administration. So, but I think that you know a person a person should be. Uh, should be selected or judged or elected by the, by the results that they produced. Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, we got our hearts ripped out in the playoffs like no other. I mean, it, <laughs> so, and I'm with you. I don't believe in curses. I don't believe in any of that stuff. But sometimes I look back at like third 19 and I look back at the catch. I, I'm like, man, something ain't right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to ask, what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Mm-hmm. But uh, but yes, I, I was just curious. And then thoughts on this team, just as a fan. I mean, are, you see what the Cowboys, you know, back to back twelve and five. It's you know they, they added a couple more pieces. As a fan of the Cowboys, are you are you feeling pretty good about going into this season? And maybe I am. I'm I'm team? very hopeful. I think uh, um, you know I've I've had the privilege of of uh, of watching the Super Bowl with. Uh, Dak Prescott, he he happened to be up in the suite where they had the inductees, and and he he sat with me for quite a while, and we watched the game together. Wow, he's a great guy, and I really believe in his ability and his 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 uh, ethic of of the way he approaches a game. Um, I think that he can that he can rally a team around him, and I think he can he can do well. The defense looks good. I think they're you know. They're overall, I think they, they've got a real good shot at it. Yeah, well, I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, we, sure. we, we both do. He get, I mean, you know, we, he talk, we talked a little bit about, you know, Cowboys bias between whether it be with the Hall of Fame voters, national media and stuff. But, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if you if you hear any of that, you know, the noise that goes around him. But, I mean, Dak Prescott. I mean, he, like you said, he's a great guy. Uh, you hear nothing but great things about his leadership. But they just, you know, the the national media just seems to to really get after that kid and and just go after him and with with all the 
things that he's been through and the guy that he is, man, I just feel like a lot of it's undeserving, which is kind of one of those things about the about the Cowboys being held in that just a different light than all 31 other teams. So kind of sad to see, but I definitely, definitely hope you're right here. I think that Prescott's the guy and and hopefully this year's a little bit different for us and we get that Super Bowl. Maybe uh maybe your you know father getting enshrined in the Hall of Fame is kind of gonna give us a little bit of a momentum going into this 2023 season. I certainly hope so. I, I, I definitely think that uh, that all the components, all the elements, as, as long as they remain injury free, I think they're 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 you know got a solid chance. Yeah. No. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun year. I'm looking forward to it, and and really, you know, just had a a, a great time sharing some memories of your dad. And I'm hopeful that I could. You know, hopefully the game where you get the, you know, the Hall of Fame ring. We, I was there when Jimmy Johnson got it. I think it was first the Eagles. So maybe mm-hmm. you guys will do one better because I never, I tell the Eagle fans, I've never seen us lose against the Eagles. Right. You know, I've walked out always happy, never walked out disappointed. So that would be a fun one. I think it's a Sunday night game. So, mm-hmm. you know, Dallas and Jerry, they always love to do things over the top. So uh, I, hopefully it may be a nice Sunday night game. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I hope so. We'll, we'll see which one they pick. Yeah, yeah. No, awesome. Well, I just want to thank you, uh, and, and I look forward to to watching the Hall of Fame induction. And finally, like I said, you, you know, your father was just like I never got a chance to see him play, but just a, a Hall of Fame person, and now a Hall of Fame football player, which was long overdue and well deserved. And I just wanted to thank you again for for allowing you know allowing us to to reach out to you and have to come in and tell a story because we have a lot of young cowboy fans i get in arguments with them all the time they, they this guy's better that guy's better and i just try to say is you guys from that gen- the generation now they don't understand all the success and all the players that paved the way and we've got so many former cowboys that come in and former nfl players and it's really you know i think what our job and what i love to do is tell the stories of those players and let and allow them you know, to tell that story and, and to the newer generation to know that these guys paved the way, all these $50 million contracts and stuff, you know, that was, you know, on the, on the backs of the guys, you know, in the previous generation, starting with your, you know, your dad's era and a little before, but after that, that really has made the NFL into what it is today. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much. We look forward to hang tight. Yeah. We're going to just end the show. And I want to thank you again personally, but you know, this is Scott Halley, Chuck Halley's son, Entering in the cave, shared some just great stories about his father. Finally, you know, long overdue getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. And we can't wait to watch it. And that that's the beauty is it's going to happen. He's joining DeMarcus Ware. I'd be remiss without saying that. Another great cowboy. But that's the start of the season. That's why I love the Hall of Fame and Shrine in the Hall of Fame game. So I appreciate it. And we'll be talking to you soon and hopefully see you at AT&T. Thank you so much. I appreciate right. the opportunity. All right. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you for coming on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hang tight. Oh, that was awesome, man. I just, I just, like I said, I get chills talking to, talking to the, you know, about the history of the Cowboys and, yeah. and hearing some of the stories about his father. I mean, it's about it, 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 it lived up to it, the memories and, and really him as a person hearing all those autographs. And, you know, nowadays you see some of these players, they sign one autograph, they're, they're, they're hightailing it out of there. He would stay, you know, 20 minutes in a restaurant when he's with his family to sign autographs. It's amazing. Yeah. Different, yeah. different era of, yeah. of football player for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, just a part of that rich history that the, you know, that the Dallas Cowboys have. So like, you know, it, it is, uh, it is very, it's long overdue. Um, you know, it's sad that it took this long. Um, you know, and then just part of his story that before we get off that I just want to yep. make sure that we share to our, to our viewers is that, you know, um, it hit, it hits home to me, the personal situation of having Alzheimer's and dementia. I have lost uh, my grandfather and my grandmother, both of that. Just want to let our, our viewers know that, you know, if you, uh, if you, if you feel it in your heart, that Alzheimer's association does have a great uh, group uh, that you can go on. You can, you can just Google Alzheimer's Association. You can donate to that. Um, it's something that, you know, I hope to one day see them find a cure for because it's an awful uh, disease that, uh, you know, that takes the mind, um, and eventually the body too. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a cause that is worthy of donating to. So if you find that in your heart, you know, click on, go on there and donate because it's a good cause. So no, no, absolutely. And a, and a, and a great message and a great way to, to really end it. And it is something I haven't dealt with it personally. I know friends who have, and, um, I'd be lying to say it's one of my biggest fears, you know, as, as you get older and, and with your kids and with your family, it's, it's yeah. something that, 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 yeah, I just pray they, they get a cure for it soon. And uh, it's it's definitely very serious. So 
but we appreciate you guys joining us and, and, and you know, allowing us to share the stories of, of the great Chuck Howley and, and Cowboys legend. And uh, we hope to see you guys soon. We've got more great content coming up. So if you're new, again, hit that subscribe, hit that like. We've got a great season coming up and, and we'll have more great interviews and hopefully get more, more legends into the cave to share the stories of, of those great cowboy teams in the 70s and the I'd love to say 80s, but it really wasn't much in the 80s. But I'll say 90s. <laughs> so, all right. You guys take care. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Okay.